and we are recording. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Killian. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. As we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel may, by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection. The same Christ our Lord. Amen. Good times. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday morning. Nice and peaceful and hopefully not, no, one, no one's paving any parking lots where you are. Although it seems like for the, for the moment, they're, they're quiet right now. I have my window open here because it's, you know, a nice morning here. <clears throat> and I hope it is also a nice morning where you are and not too hot. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm this morning is the hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and, give, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No. In all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This gospel that we have this weekend is one that the commentators talking about the scriptures, talking about the gospel specifically, find tons and tons of wonderful symbolism in. And it's not always obvious. Some of them are a bit more heavy-handed. For example, the 12 baskets full of that which is there in excess, kind of representing a variety of things. So 12, whenever the number 12 comes up, we should have a little light that flashes like, oh, it's probably something important. Yeah, well, in, in this case, there are a couple ways of reading that. For example, um, there's one talking about, well, talking about the 12 tribes of Israel, of course. And then there's another one that says the 12 tribes of Israel, but there's also like all those who are fed too. So it's actually about the feeding of the Gentiles as well as the 12 tribes. And maybe even something like, but the 12 tribes weren't listening, and so they weren't fed, but it's still there waiting for them when they need it. You know, it's kind of, um, this, this train of thought will give you many, many things. Some of the symbols here are not so obvious, like they sat down on the grass. <laughs> it, it seems like that's, that's kind of a perfunctory statement, but <clears throat> St. Jerome goes and makes a really big deal about this, about how even though they were there and the grass is there, the sitting down upon it is like letting go and resting from all of those things which like grass wither and die. So in order to receive that which is from the Lord, the, the, these things are let go of. And so that which is received from God is that which is not going to wither and die, that which lasts forever. Or another way of looking at it that, we have here an example of what the law and the prophets do versus what the Lord does. That in the law and the prophets, there would be, you know, not so much healing for the sick, which is what the whole context of this moment, this multiplication of loaves and fish moment, um, but instead having come from there, coming from the law and the prophets, this is away from their towns and villages, to this other place where the Lord is, they receive from him not only healing, but also nourishment. That the law and the prophets are important is a preliminary, but you have to kind of go beyond them to get something else. Another way of looking at it. And the list goes on and on and on. <clears throat> and I'm sure at some point, this gospel, which is a pretty you know, famous moment in scripture, is, has been explained in many, many different ways. This morning, I'd like to uh, go kind of a different way. I'd like to talk about what we heard yesterday. So in the course of like this thing of nine o'clock coffee, we were reading yesterday, yesterday's gospel, which is in fact the gospel right before this. When Jesus heard about the death of John the Baptist, which had happened beforehand sometime, he, his response, is telling. His response at hearing about the death of John the Baptist was to go to the deserted place, which then had everyone follow him, 
And then this whole scenario that we hear in the gospel today takes place. But his response to that has a lot of things in it for us to ponder as well. So instead of doing a variety of other things like, you know, starting an insurrection or something, or uh, being otherwise very angry at the death of his cousin, or um, kind of doing that which is a more obvious kind of mourning, or turning himself in because he sees the direction that things are going, he goes out into the desert. Often when we have a, a really weird and difficult kind of tense situation in our lives, the best thing to do is to step back. Not all the time do we have to use the direct approach to take care of things. Because often when we want to take care of things, we're not gonna succeed. We're simply going to add fire to those flames. It, it's not helpful to fuel the, the unrest that is going on. And so sometimes, maybe often, the best strategy is to withdraw. This withdrawal is not a, you know, a, a failure, I think, and certainly the Lord did not fail in the death of John the Baptist. It was a difficult moment, a moment of anxiety, a moment of pain, but he took a moment, he took a breath, he took a minute. And in that comes something else completely. It's useful for us to remember how when the cares that we have, the anxieties that we have, these moments of pain come, when we shift our attention, not because we're being careless, but because we're simply doing that thing which is healthy, then so much more can come of it in a different direction entirely. How is the death of John the Baptist connected to the multiplication of the loaves and fish then? Well, in kind of the logic of the gospel, especially this kind of um, trying to find images and understanding through uh, explaining the details, then we see something which is very important, something which is kind of typical in the Catholic understanding of how faith works, that when there's a moment of witness of someone, for example, martyrdom, for example, the martyrdom that leads to death, this is not a fruitless thing. In fact, it gives so much more in the context that the Lord desires. That may seem kind of a, a, a sad way of seeing a, an event so brutal and sad as the death of John the Baptist. But think about what this whole gospel is about. It's about transforming death into life. It's about transforming pain and suffering into joy and satisfaction. This is the internal logic of the gospel of our Lord Christ, that from something so terrible should come a magnificent moment for a miracle. It happens not because that terrible thing is attacked directly or confronted in, a, in an aggressive kind of stance, but rather in a much more trusting, in a much more filled with faith kind of way, allowing the Lord to do what he wills. If we think about the kind of the state of mind of Jesus at this time, we should definitely consider it that this gospel that we read today, that this miracle of the loaves and fishes happens at a time when he is very much in pain. This is one of his closest relatives and someone that is very much beloved to him. This is someone that in their interactions in the Gospels is always full of a great deal of meaning. You know, this is the one John the Baptist says, behold the Lamb of God. This is the one John the Baptist says that um, he is unworthy to tie, untie his sandals. This is the one that Jesus says, there is no man born who is greater than John the Baptist. There's, <clears throat> this isn't just a, a kind of a, a moment that comes and goes, it's kind of like, uh, like, like what we have in the news that gives us an anxiety attack for a moment and then we move on and forget about it, but rather something very deeply personal and very painful to him. From that comes the multiplication of the loaves and fish.
in that context, don't we see that arc of how from death comes life, how from anxiety comes peace? This is the logic of the gospel. And so we are always reminded about how important it is to be fed by the Lord, to receive from him. Not just those moments of fun, of grace, of joy in a kind of a facile way, but something deeper and not just a strategy for dealing with our anxieties, but actually a knowledge that can lead to trust that allows us to understand how much more the Lord has in store for us, even if things seem pretty rotten. And that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Great. So really, that's it. I mean, I think that's good enough to think about for a long time, and maybe not a way that you've heard this gospel explained before. So take it to heart. The Lord really does have a lot in store for us. Think of how he turns that which is painful to that which is joyful, not in an obvious way, not in one that is directly aggressive, but one that is much more trusting and one that is always in the hands of God. As we always do, let us bring our prayers together now and offer them that he will hear and answer us. For an end to the global coronavirus pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those suffering from the disease, either physically, financially, or emotionally, are healed and fully recovered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That a spirit of unity come to the American people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Catholic faithful remain close to the Lord during these times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray? We pray in gratitude for a young adult parishioner, Laura Perez, on her birthday today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The mayor leads ask that we please pray for the conversion of our loved ones, who are outside the faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with heavenly gifts. And in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. I hope you all have a wonderful time planned for this Sunday. It's a beautiful day. Hopefully, it's not going to be quite as hot as we thought. I'm hoping. So, we shall see. In any event, let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you, and by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. To the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. 
most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Well, our friends across the street are back to paving the parking lot. <laughs> so I hope you're having a better Sunday. Do something which is actually recreation and leisure and that which is good for the soul, if you can. And God bless you all and see you tomorrow. All right? Have a good Sunday. Bye. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Father. Bye. Thank you. Yeah.